at one point in the bathroom, we looked up and saw them all in the ceiling, and we were just like, how... How do you do this? This is not human. Were you on the ceiling? When these rappers get killed, not incidental. Somebody made $100 million and now don't have to talk to that artist or none of their crew. Don't have to validate none of their contracts. Right. And Fab and Jada and mm. everybody, they made a compilation video of you because they said you were signing real suspect mm. on, the, on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course nah. I didn't see it. No, nah, I didn't see it. Didn't see when you hear of Diddy, many refer to him as a businessman. He wears suits, goes to Met Gala's, pockets deeper than the ocean, in love with young Miami. Others would say Diddy is selfish, a narcissist, that he's gay, and he's destructive. Why could these much rumors be surrounding Diddy? Before we even begin talking about Diddy, let me open your eyes into the secret parties of the mega rich. The parties of the mega rich. On February 9th, 2022, a documentary was posted to Vice describing the secret sex parties of the mega rich. These parties were filled with some of the most vilest things. The manager recalls that on one weekend, a large group of 60-ish people would rent out an entire hotel. They would purchase the entire hotel just to turn it into one giant orgy. They'd spend $250,000 just for two nights at a time. And these billionaires, they would leave one heck of a nightmare in these hotel rooms. Is it blood on the floor, feces on the walls, or even semen stains on the ceiling? Inside these rooms that were left by these billionaires, a black light showing germs not visible to the eye, to the naked eye, would be turned on and what they saw that was left of this party was disgusting. We looked down and saw all the stains, we looked to the sides and saw them on the wall. At one point in the bathroom, we looked up and saw them all on the ceiling and we were just like, how? How do you do this? This is not human. Were you on the ceiling? The secret parties of Diddy. Just like that party, Diddy has been known to be having some of the most freakish Hollywood parties. In a video, you see Jamie Foxx as he jokingly describes these parties of Hollywood. Jamie would even say one time of how Diddy spent a million dollars just to host a party of this sort. I would hang out and watch him throw parties. Sure, he right? famously threw his like his it was white party out? Well, he would throw yeah. a party. One point, I went to Philly, followed him all the way to Philly. He threw a party and he said, yo, Playboy, this party costs a million and a half dollars. So a million and a half dollars to throw this party. With this, you can definitely tell that these types of Hollywood parties are definitely going on behind closed doors. And apparently, this was something that Diddy did often. But what do you think could be happening inside these multi-million dollar parties? I mean, I'm sure there's some crazy things happening, right? And I said, Puff, I'll throw you a party for 400 bucks. On a TV program called Drink Champs, Diddy had a few shots. And he became so tipsy that he started referring to other men as his daddy. Hey, Mr. Lee, yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? I like yeah. when you like this, daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you're scrambling right here, right here. and scraping no, for no, shit. No, 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 no. I, got I no like shit. that. What in the freakish world is happening here? Kind of makes you wonder, right? How come Diddy is referring to other grown men as his daddy? Could Diddy be gay? Mr. Lee, yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you, when you oh, scrambling right here, right here. and scraping. Not only did Diddy say these things, he continued by saying he wanted to party and have a birthday party with Fab, the guy that was sitting across from him. I'm in. Look, did you look back me? on where I became. Did you miss me? For real, because we, I'm saying, it seems like a thing. I miss this party birthday party, party, man. Miss party. I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? I want you to party with me. Birthday, man. I, I, yeah, we, we partied for my birthday before you. It looks like when Diddy has had a few shots, his true colors begin to show. This might also make you wonder what types of birthday party did Diddy have in his mind? And from what you're about to find out, Diddy's parties aren't just a regular birthday parties with cakes and presents. His parties are very mature. Very mature. And Tupac was like a couple, seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on. And but that's the come. Just a few minutes after Diddy said he wanted to party with Fabs on Drink Champs, Diddy then goes on to play fight with another man. Hey, yo. Bro, bro, we're intoxicated. Listen, listen, listen. 
Oh, oh, groovy, yeah, baby. Right, some bone chilling suspect stuff happening here. After that podcast, the clips of Diddy saying all those things went so viral that he'd be asked about it. On a Breakfast Club episode of January 18, 2018, Diddy was their guest. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Brother Love is here. Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> Just call me Love. Just, Just call love, love now. Just Love now. And around 17 minutes into the podcast, Charlamagne asked Diddy about those things he said in the interview. <laughs> when you was with Nora. <laughs> and Fab and Jada and mm -hmm. everybody, they made a compilation video of you because they said you were sounding real suspect mm. on the on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course, nah. I didn't see it. No, nah, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? I swear to God. Oh, Come yeah. on, yeah. man. You saw hey, that yo, on World hey, Star and hey, on yo, the Gram. Check, check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause game, I would definitely... That came from Harlem, too, by Yeah, it came from Harlem. I definitely would say some, oh, my, whoa crowd would be like, whoa, did he just say that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games, y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But, um, yeah. Did you Compilation? Go? Nah, I was I was coming off of being in Miami at night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did he start pretending, playing dumb, acting ignorant, like he does not know what Charlemagne was talking about? Charlemagne asks Diddy if he recalls. Diddy says no. Then Charlemagne goes on to play the clips for Diddy. Yo, play some, play. Like, hey yo, play listen, yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I yeah. like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah. I like when you when oh, you scrambling right and scraping for no, no, no. shit. That was you scrambling. <laughs> you said, you said, what? You said I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah. I mean, I was you don't called, go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh. I mean, it's. I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. I'm you sure know, we can I, put Charlemagne's I, compilation against Diddy's. Oh, we have a bunch. We put. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> I, I also, I also don't do it because I know I'm. I know I'm bad at the game. I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe, you know, adding up to with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic, but I'm not homophobic and I really don't, you know, care. You know what I'm saying? I just, but um, I'm bad at the game and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab the party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that. And he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. All we know is that on that interview, Diddy never declined or accepted the allegations. In fact, like a politician, he dodged the questions. And I can see why he dodged them, right? That was the best thing Diddy could have done to keep his reputation. If he accepted those claims, he'd be coming out of the closet. And if he stayed neutral, the questions that we all have would still remain in the air. But again, those things that Diddy was saying on the Drink Champs interview wouldn't compare to what he said to 50 Cent, the story of 50. Imagine this. There's this pretty girl that you like. Because you like her so much, you tell her, let's go shopping, right? And you pay for everything that she'd buy. And just like you, who asked that girl out on a shopping spree, that was the case of 50 Cent, who was asked by Diddy to take him shopping. The nigga Pop was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get stout. Then he was like, yo, he was like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Paul. Okay. You're telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this nigga just said? <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this, this nigga, like, the fuck is you? Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> and this is the shit, this is shit that goes on. But this is a little fruit, my pop is a fruit pile. <laughs> Trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? I'm just sitting out there for no reason. Yo, for you don't see accident pictures with me like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. Chill, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm, I'm telling you. Look, look. Later you're going to find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> 
understand what I'm saying? Chill. Man, listen. I'm trying to tell you the truth. But yep. the truth, sometimes it hurts. Right. It hurts people and they don't want to hear that shit. But right. I'm trying to tell you. Nah. Nigga asked me, could he take me shopping? And it fucked me up. Because I'm looking like, what the fuck? Did this nigga just like, I want to take you shopping. Right. But this gets even more suspect. Many believe Diddy groomed Usher and Justin Bieber when they were young. In the words of Diddy, he once said, Me and Usher used to play fight. We used to wrestle for Frosted Flakes. We had, we, um, we want to thank you, come here. Don't, don't sit on the bed at night, no homo. No, just, just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed, but it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man, man. It's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it, you did it. No, no, I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna, if we can, just let's let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed, at all. I, I should look like he fresh off a goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early and now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world. And I'm yo, like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck did Puff just say? say? Right, so you see. Diddy says they fought over Frosted Flakes, and if Usher was sent to Diddy at such a young age to be coached by Diddy, of course, why would he be wrestling with children over Frosted Flakes? And it makes you wonder, did Diddy also wrestle with Justin Bieber for Frosted Flakes? And even so, why was Usher and Justin Bieber even sent to Diddy at such a young age? Here we have Diddy, who created this oddly named camp that goes by the name of Puff's Flavor Camp. Why the word flavor, you may be wondering? You see in a bit, this creepy camp was a camp where young aspiring music stars would come to live with Diddy for a few months and get to experience the life of a rapper. They would live with them, sleep in his house, and eat with them. Sounds harmless, right? Both Usher and Justin Bieber were the students of Diddy's flavor camp, with both of them getting to see what happens inside of Diddy's house behind closed doors. At the time, Diddy was 30, while Usher and Justin Bieber were just 15. In the Howard Stern interview with Usher being their guest, Usher described these things he saw as some very curious things happening behind closed doors. To New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was... And it was <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Now, so you may think, how was this happening? And where was Usher's parents when all of this was happening? And what types of activities the Usher see at this age? And just like Usher here, here's Justin Bieber who is about to spend 48 hours with Diddy. Which Diddy would go on to say the things him and Justin would be doing are things that could not be disclosed. So check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose. But um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, <laughs> and, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. 
Now, in this context, what were these buck full crazy things happening inside of Diddy's house? Also, what was so secretive about his house parties with Justin that he couldn't disclose what they'd be doing? Here would be the reason as to why many would see Diddy as a person that groomed Justin and Usher at such a young age. And now that you've seen some of the things Diddy does, what about people from his closest circles that had been inside his secret parties? What are these secret things that they have seen? Eyewitness accounts. Jada Pinkett and Will Schmilf, you told me before that she was at a party before that they attended and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. Okay, uh, this is Boxer. His name Twine, he's from our neighborhood. He, he was married to uh, Tanisha Arnold. So the broad play Pam on uh, Martin Lawrence. We went to the party with her. I mean, it was a matter of fact, it was a set it off party. Jada Pickett, Pippa Capaz, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, seemed like Puff and Tupac it was like a couple, seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that, that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Vivica Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with big old booty and shit. No, he was gay and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. When you hear of Diddy's parties costing around a million dollars, you have to wonder, how do people even get invited to these types of parties? Here I did a quick Google search and I found out that the way people got invites to these sick parties were based on contacts, connections, and even careers, meaning what you did for a living. You pretty much have to know someone that knew someone that knows someone. And there'd be a bunch of drunk celebrities, a bunch of girls, a bucket loads of drugs. And in this case, with Diddy spending a million dollars to host this party, drugs have to be bought in bucket loads. We have ecstasy, crack, weed all types of drug you can name right it's all available at these types of parties it's just a party where you sin it's a sinful party it's not no birthday parties it's not a regular party where you cut the cake not those parties these parties are different but what are the things that even makes this party even weirder right there was exhibit a man who was diddy's friend he talked about an experience that he had with diddy went to um uh, Florida, we got invited to a, a puffy party, the New Year's Eve party. Uh -huh. Went to the party, you know. All um, dudes? Yeah, yeah. Nah, it was actually a good party. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. it, it was at, on game. South Beach, right? Right. So then we, you know, we go to the house, and then, you know, uh, he, he invited us to the house because he wanted to go to the club afterwards, right? I was like, right. okay, cool. So, Superhead is with me, you know what I'm saying? Karen, Karen is, is with me, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Superhead. Yeah. So she takes me, she, you know, she, Puffy calls me outside, he's like, hey, man. You know, the, um, that, that girl you, you know about the girl you, I was like, yeah, nigga, I don't get anybody know about, you know what I'm saying, what's happening? You know what I'm saying, he's like, uh, you know, that's the devil, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what the you mean got, that's the devil? The devil got a pretty mouth. Yeah, and I was like, what you mean that's the devil? <laughs> you know, and then he was like, yeah, man, she, she videotaped me with fingers in the boot. That's a new movie. You know movie. what I'm saying? I was the like, what? The devil sucks like, penis. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking oh, about? We oh, run, oh, we yeah. run, we run. <laughs> I heard a penis and a finger in the yeah. ass going, what? She said, he, 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 so Puffy tells you he that gonna, she... She will videotape you with fingers in the boot. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, you what know does what that mean? Confession. So then, so then I go back in the house and I ask her, what the fuck are you talking about? He, he well, you said you're a filmer. No, I, I did ask him. He's just like, whatever. He, and he went off and did his thing. And I was, was like, he okay. limping? <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> he walked away and the nail fell out of his boot. No, nah, I'm going to clear this shit up. Because I'm not going to have my name. I ain't going to have my name out there crazy I'll like that. Go ahead, go ahead. So then, so then, so then he said, so then she said, uh, I told him what she, he told me. And she was like, oh, she started laughing like a mother. I'll tell you later. So then, so then I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to make a big deal of it, whatever. So, so then he's, you know, then, then I guess he's had some prior incident with her that he don't want nobody to know about. You know what I'm saying? But this is not even it. It's girls in the club, too. And then she pointed another direction. It's another dude over there, like, butt-ass naked. Dancing. Bosworth Ben. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
<laughs> we take off, man. You know what I'm saying? We lead the club so directly. Saying, I didn't say peace to nobody. So I didn't see nobody. Gay. Yeah, it was it was a lot suspect. Of male, a lot of lot, lot, lot of suspect. Exchanges. The club was you called. could chalk it up. You could chalk it up to being in Miami or whatever. I never blame it on. I've been in a gang. I've been in a gang of clubs, man. The club was called. And I ain't never I ain't never mistakenly stepped into a club having that kind of. So why would Diddy be a participant of these parties? Why would even Exhibit be going to these types of parties? And to top this all off, Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Gene, said there were pictures circulating around their circle of Diddy getting his pants pulled down by another man. But because of the power Diddy had, those pictures never made it to the internet. It was destroyed. Puff got one of the hottest DJs off of Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down. You understand what I'm saying? Puff had power. And a quick message to YouTube, right? These informations I'm reporting on, they're all from the website, the YouTube website. These are not something I'm just pulling out. I'm not exposing nobody. I'm just reporting on what's available. And also with Gene, Diddy's ex-bodyguard, there was the moon rituals that he claimed he saw Diddy doing. Him and Kim, Kim Porter birthday was on the same day. And people was thinking that because of Puff gave his birthday party on her birthday. But it was bigger than that and people don't understand that. And I think that he had almost told off on himself when he spoke about the winter, so the winter Solstice. And that's when the pagans and uh, people who believe in the cult was looking for that moon on 12 12 at 12 p.m 12 a.m and they were doing spiritual rituals at that time that's when that that was going to be the last day of that was going to be the last day of the full moon and that means that uh, the seasons and all that stuff has changed. But when you get into that spiritual realm stuff, it was when people did, they went and they gave, they, they, they paid homage to certain sacrifices and homage to certain idols. And on the third day, they would drink party be merry and the men would have sex with each other and then there's jamie fox who was just mysteriously hospitalized after talking about diddy being gay there's the clip of diddy calling meek mill daddy with meek mill looking very very uncomfortable with the way he was saying it man you doing it man you deserve it daddy you putting in that work I'm proud of you. I love you. Yeah. And even the way Diddy made his money, right? A bunch of artists' careers were screwed over, giving them terrible record deals, making their lives a living hell. With these artists barely making any money from their music. Craig Matt, Mace, Shine, and all of these other artists that Diddy signed and used for his own come up. Even though Diddy is big on black excellence and representation, these buzzwords that he seems to use are steeped in hypocrisy, right? It's, it seems as if he doesn't even care about other people but himself. And those artists he signed all wanted out of their deals and even if they were let off their contract, he kept the lingering hold on them by retaining most of their music publishing. If you knew anything about music label or Diddy's music label in general, Bad Boy Records, because he controlled the artist's publishing, he earns all the money, and even when their music is used to movies, TV shows, and any types of commercial products, all that money that they're making, that they're given to use that music, it's all given to Diddy. In all, I'm not surprised as to Diddy being closeted, nor should we be alarmed that he even is, right? In simple words, God remains on top. Diddy is in Hollywood, and Hollywood seems to be a very sick place. Rappers right now are wearing things I'd only see my mom wear. Blouses, skirts, crop tops, purses, 
you name it. For example, this young thug wearing this dress saying it's all art. There's Kanye wearing this woman blouse. Diddy wearing this woman skirt. Lil Wayne in this leopard print leggings. Andre 3000 in this bedazzled fringed out attire. Kid Cudi in this crop top. Kid Cudi in a dress. Lou Uzi Vert wearing a skirt. Lou Uzi Vert carrying a lady's purse. Pusha T wearing a skirt. Young Thug with woman Fendi boots. Wiz Khalifa with a skirt. A dress on Post Malone. And even Jamie Foxx himself. So why should we be surprised at Diddy if it's looking like these guys are all doing the same thing? Even for there to be this much coming out from immediate circles, you know, bodyguards, friends against Diddy, he had to have been involved in some of these stuff he's been said to be doing. I mean, why did Cat Williams, a person blacklisted from Hollywood, say this about rappers' deaths? When these rappers get killed, not incidental. Somebody made a hundred million dollars and now don't have to talk to that artist or none of their crew don't have to validate none of their contracts. Now only got to deal with the mama, only got to see her once a year and it's over and the money. He goes up and up and up. And even though these are all speculative rumors, you know, I wouldn't put it past nobody, but I'll leave this one open-ended. What do you think about Diddy? 